He became sin who knew no sin that we might become his righteousness. He humbled himself and carried the cross. Love so amazing. Love so amazing. Jesus Messiah. The name above all names. Blessed Redeemer. for sinners, the ransom from heaven, Jesus Messiah, Lord of all. His body the bread, His blood the wine, broken and poured out, all for love, the whole earth trembled. And the veil was torn. Love so amazing. Love so amazing. Jesus Messiah. The name above all names. Blessed Redeemer. Emmanuel. Rescue for sinners, the ransom from heaven, Jesus Messiah, Lord of all. All our hope is in you, all our hope is in you, all the glory to you, God, the light of the world, Jesus Messiah, name above all names, blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel, the rescue for sinners. The ransom from heaven, Jesus Messiah, Lord of all. Jesus Messiah, Lord of all. The Lord of all. Sheila, what's next? Carrie so forgot. to trust in Jesus. <laughs> Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus Just to take him at his word Just to rest upon his promise just to know, thus saith the Lord, Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I proved him o'er and o'er. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. Oh, how sweet to trust in Jesus, just to trust his cleansing blood just in simple faith to plunge me neath the healing cleansing flood jesus jesus how i trust him how i proved him more and more jesus jesus precious jesus oh for grace to trust him more Yes, tis sweet to trust in Jesus, 
Just from sin and self to cease, just from Jesus simply taking life and rest and joy and peace. Jesus, 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 how I trust him, how I've proved him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. I'm so glad I learned to trust thee, precious Jesus, Savior, friend. And I know that thou art with me, will be with me to the end. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I proved him o'er and o'er. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. There within my heart a melody, Jesus whispers sweet and low. Fear not, I am with thee, peace be still, in all of life's web and flow. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know, fills my every longing. Keeps me singing as I go. Fill oh, my life with wreck by sin. Tis for fill my life with pain. Jesus wept across the broken strings. Stirred the slumbering chords again. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Sweetest name I know. Fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. Feasting on the riches of his grace, resting neath his sheltering wing. Always looking on his smiling face, that is why I shout and sing. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Sweetest name I know Fills my every longing Keeps me singing as I go Though sometimes he leads through waters deep Trials fall across my way Though sometimes the path seems rough and steep See his footprints all the way Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know, fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. Soon he's coming back to welcome me, far beyond the starry sky. I shall wing my flight to worlds unknown. I shall reign with him on high. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know. Fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. I couldn't remember how many times that one was, to be honest, so I kept looking at the screen going, is there another verse? Why don't you stand with us for the next couple, we're going to... We're going to play one not so new and one that we've been playing that's newer. <laughs> newer. They're both new to us, I guess, technically, right? <coughs> Newish. Yeah. You ready, Carrie? I'm ready. For I'm the Lord thy God. God spoke to Moses at the burning bush, burning bush, burning bush. God spoke to Moses at the burning bush, saying, I'm the Lord thy God. Take your shoes off, Moses, you're on holy ground, holy ground, 
holy ground. Take your shoes off, Moses, from holy ground, for I'm the Lord thy God. Go yonder, Moses, and smite that rock, smite that rock, smite that rock. Go yonder, Moses, and smite that rock, for I'm the Lord thy God. Take your shoes off, Moses, you're on holy ground, holy ground, holy ground. Take your shoes off, Moses, you're on holy ground, for I'm the Lord thy God. Stand still, Moses, see salvation work, see salvation work, see salvation work. Stand still, Moses, see salvation work, for I'm the Lord thy God. Take your shoes off, Moses, you're on holy ground, holy ground, holy ground. Take your shoes off, Moses. Holy ground, for I'm the Lord thy God. Take your shoes off, Moses, you're on holy ground. Holy ground, holy ground. Take your shoes off, Moses, you're on holy ground, for I'm the Lord thy God. Take your shoes off, Moses, you're on holy ground. Holy ground. Holy ground, take your shoes off, Moses, you're on holy ground, for I'm the Lord thy God, for I'm the Lord thy God. That ought to get us woke up today. Woo! <laughs> Let me start with that one one time, Sheila. <laughs> I won't be worth much after, but <laughs> this is one we started doing not too long uh, back, it's called His Mercy is More, and I know she loves it. I, I love the song. If you just really listen to the words uh, throughout it, we've talked about it so many times, but what love could remember, no wrongs we have done. There's no love but the love of God that can forget the wrongs that we've done um, in our past and that we're still going to do in our future, so. What I could, could remember, remember, no wrongs we have done. Omniscient, all knowing, he counts not their sum. Throw into a sea without bottom or shore. Our sins, they are many, his mercy is more. Praise the Lord, his mercy is more. Stronger than darkness, new every morn. Our sins, they are many, His mercy is more. What patience would wait as we constantly roam? What Father so tender is calling us home? He welcomes the weakest, the vilest, the poor. Our sins, they are many, His mercy is more. Praise the Lord, His mercy is more. Stronger than darkness, new every morn. Our sins, they are many, His mercy is more. What riches of kindness He lavished on us. His blood was the payment, his life was the cost. We stood neath the dead we could never afford. Our sins, they are many, his mercy is more. Praise the Lord, his mercy is more. Stronger than darkness, new every morn. Our sins, they are many, His mercy is more. Praise the Lord, His mercy is more. Stronger than darkness, new every morn. Our sins, they are many, His mercy is more. Our sins, they are many, His mercy is more.
get your note there, Sheila. Be lost without it later, won't you? <laughs> so I was preparing this week, and obviously VBS being this week, I kind of landed on um, Psalm 25 this morning. So if you want to get your Bible turned there at some this morning, get adjusted here. Um, as you can see, the front poster here at my feet is Psalms 25.4, if I remember right. Emily, am I wrong? Am I right? Oh, I'm good. I read right. Okay. I can read. Still doing all right today. But as we prepare this week uh, for Bible, Bible school, and I know we have all probably get a little anxious when we go to start Bible school. I know I always do for myself um, because I know that I am not the game person, but I'm doing rec, okay? Um, when me and Emily first started dating, I think it was the second year we were dating, we started doing rec um, at East Salem. And if, correct me if I'm wrong, Emily, we've done rec every time except for the couple years we were in Evansville. Um, but Emily is the game person. Trevor's just there, okay? <laughs> so if anybody complains about games this week, it's because Trevor was just there. But anyway, we probably all get a little anxious, but Vacation Bible School in most churches is the most significant outreach that they do every year. If you look at most churches, if they didn't do VBS, they wouldn't have much outreach, period, right? I was talking to Jay uh, from Wayne City this week, and they had 78 kids a few nights this week, 78 kids. And think how many kids they wouldn't have touched had they not had VBS. Because I know they don't have 78 kids in, in Sunday morning worship, right? So when we look at our church and the outreach program, it, it, it's important. So once a year, we go through prepping, studying, praying for the children that are walking to the doors the week of VBS to hear about Jesus, right? We got tickled with Annabelle last night. I had one of my Bibles, one of my minis sitting out, and Annabelle saw it, and it wasn't in my spot. It was in Mommy's spot, okay? So she said, Daddy, here's your Bible, and brought it to me. And I asked her, I said, well, who's the Bible about? I don't know. She's three, right? Not even yet. And I said, well, well who, who's all these videos we watch about? What's about Jesus? Well, that's the Bible, right? Well, some kids may not know what's in the Bible until they come to VBS. Maybe not ours, but another VBS. Um, and I looked some stats up this morning as I was finishing, and it's, it, there's a few here, so just bear with me. 25% of baptisms reported by the Southern Baptist Convention come from VBS. So a, a quarter of the baptisms that Southern Baptist churches do in a year come out of VBS. It's important, right? Every one person trained in VBS revol- results in a one-to-one ratio for salvation. So for every one person that's trained, one gets saved in the year. Uh, as I continued looking, 10% of the people enrolled in VBS are unchurched. So 10% of the children that go through VBS are not in church, they don't know what the Bible is, they don't know what a church looks like on the inside, whatever it might be, and they come in and they maybe get overwhelmed because you see Jesus' name everywhere, you see Bible verses everywhere, um, and, and I remember being a little guy and I was raised in church and sometimes VBS was overwhelming, right? So 10% though are unchurched. 2.7 million people enroll in VBS each year. 2.7 million nationwide enroll in VBS each year. And of those 2.7 million, 73,000 people will accept Jesus Christ each year. So I say all that, and it sounds like big numbers, right? 73,000 people getting saved is awesome. Not going to ever discount that, okay? We should jump for joy. But when you do the math, 73,000 divided by 2.7 million, it's like 3%. It's a small number, right? So yes, people are getting saved. Yes, Things are happening in VBS, and yes, all those things are great, but there's still room for improvement, even in vacation Bible school. So I'm going to say this, and Emily, don't throw anything at me. If something doesn't go perfect this week, write it down. Let us know we, how we can improve next time. When we look at VBS, we do it once a year. I don't care how many times you've done VBS, you don't do it the same every year. It doesn't all go the same every time. We could have the same uh, 20 kids each year, and it's not going to be the exact same thing, Right? We do different decorations, we do different themes, we do all these things, and they're different. So, before I get into Psalm 25, that's my last thing, okay? So this week, we're going to pour into children, children and to direct them to Jesus over and over again. I don't care if they're saved or not, we're going to point them to Jesus time and time again. So this is just kind of talking through the night. So the first night, we're going to talk about the holiness of Jesus. I think it said Jesus is holy. I think that's how the first night goes. Um, the second night... Uh, we're going to talk about Jesus being trustworthy. 
And all this can be found in Psalm 25 today, so I'm going to talk briefly about these things. Uh, The third night, we're going to talk about how Jesus is forgiving. So I don't know about anybody else, but Wednesday night is always that night. (laughs) It always talks about that, the middle of the week, so that kids have time to hear it and respond to it by the end of the week. So Jesus is forgiving. Day night four, which is Thursday night, Jesus is worth following. Uh, And then Friday night, we're going to be able to speak into the adults that come for their children for family night, and we're going to speak about how Jesus is for everyone. And and we look at those, and I I don't care how many VBS you've been in, the theme's pretty close. They always talk about the same concepts each week. They use different verses. It's different words, don't get me wrong. But we always talk about how important it is to know that Jesus is forgiving, how he's worth being followed, and how anybody has access to Jesus. Over here, I didn't, I'm going to pick this up so nobody throw anything at me, but I told Emily that we're going to have to keep this from now on. So Scrabble pieces, A, B, and C, admit, believe, confess. How many times have we heard that, talking about VBS? If there's an easier way to share the gospel with kids, I don't know what it is other than those three letters, right? Put that there, I'll forget where I put it later. But we're going to pour into these children this week these things. And church, I want us to be honest with ourselves. We need to pour into each other with these things this week as well. There's going to be nights that are stressful, number number one and number five are always stressful, right? But, but if we really look at what we're trying to teach these kids this week, sometimes we need that as well. So I, I'm just going to read verses four and five this morning, if you would stand. Psalm 25, verses four and five. We're going to touch um, more of the chapter than that, but Psalm 25 and verse four says this, show me your ways, O Lord, teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. On you I will wait all the day. Let's pray this morning. Heavenly Father, God, as we come to you this morning, God, we just thank you for this time uh, that we get to gather in your house, God. And we thank you for this VBS we're preparing for this week, God. And we just ask, God, that we would be obedient to you this week. God, that the children that come would be receptive to hear your message, God. Uh, And God, that we would just be a light to those that are here, God, to the workers, the the students, God, and everybody in between, that we would just be a light, God, um, here uh, where we are. And we just ask that you would help us, God, through this week, God, that you would just bless us in a mighty way and be with the service this morning, God. This message is ongoing, God. I just ask that you would would touch our hearts, God, this morning, that you'd speak freely today, and, God, that you would just use us uh, each day this week, God, not just at VBS, but as we go through our daily lives, God, to just be a witness for you. Uh, God, I ask all these in the name of Jesus, and amen. So, as we look at Psalm 25 this morning, um, I used to go through Psalms a lot more often than I do now, but uh, I want to encourage you as adults, leaders this week, that we are all, all in constant need of a teacher, and we're always in need of Jesus. It, It doesn't matter how far you go in being a Christian, I don't care if you've gone through seminary school and you know everything about the Bible, forward, backward, left, and right, and everything around it, you still need Jesus more today than you did yesterday and so on and so forth. We all go through chapters of life that maybe we're not like David, maybe we didn't make the mistakes David did, but we make mistakes, right? We fall short of God's glory. The Bible says that sin is missing the mark, and we miss the mark, right? If we're really being honest with ourselves, as we come to VBS this week, we're, we're going to miss the mark this week. We're not going to be perfect this week, okay? As much as I pray that everything goes well this week, and I'm believing that it will, Something will happen that won't be 100%. It's okay, right? But we have to realize that we ourselves will never be 100% good. The Bible tells us that there's not one, right, that is perfect outside of Jesus. So no matter how far you've gone as a Christian, no matter how many times you've taught VBS or Sunday school or uh, led worship, whatever it is, you still need Jesus. And as we teach these kids this this week, so often I, I look at these 25% of reported baptisms come from BBS. And, and I, I wish I could find the statistic. I couldn't find it this week. And say how many of those kids are still in church today? 25% of baptisms come from BBS. So they've accepted Christ and, and they've gone through bab- baptism, which shows the world what they've done in their lives. And I wonder how many of them are in church each and every week. Church, the reality is that VBS is not the end-all, be-all. It is a starting point for young people in their Christian walk. I don't know how many people in this room got saved at VBS. I didn't get saved at VBS, but VBS was important to my life growing up. I learned Bible stories. I learned how much God loved me and cared for me through uh, teachers and, and other adults that just poured out their lives 
for a week, right? And I said, oh, a week doesn't sound long, but it's two and a half hours that they would pour into you night after night, even through snack time and all those things growing up. And so often I think we leave it at VBS. I, I've talked to several people over the years, and I think one of the, the biggest failures of the church today is discipleship. We get people saved. We get people baptized, but we don't, ba- we don't disciple them. We don't teach them the word. We don't show them that life isn't going to be easy being a Christian. And sometimes they drift away. We talked about it just a few weeks ago. You can't lose your salvation, but you can drift from God. And, and if you're drifting from God, you're not growing toward God, and you're going to be like David was at one point or another. How many, how many times have we heard David was great, right? David was a great king. But David made a big mistake, right? It wasn't just a oops. He, he made a mistake and then compounded by making poor decisions because of his mistake. And, and when we pick up in chapter 25, and we look at the first three verses, and I know we didn't read those, but it says this, To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, I trust in you. Let me not be ashamed. Let, my enemies not, let not my enemies triumph over me. Indeed, let no one who waits on you be ashamed. Let those be ashamed who deal with treacherous, deal treacherously without cause. I'm reading out of the King, New King James today, and I can't read, apparently. Uh, but the first three verses, David is expressing a deep longing for God to intervene in circumstances. He says, Lord, I lift up my soul. Oh, my God, I trust in you. And he says in, the, in, in verse 2, let me not be ashamed. So David uses repetition through these three verses, and he uses the word ashamed. Some, some translations, when I was studying this week, said, said disgraced. So, so David is saying, let me not be disgraced. Let me not be ashamed because of my shortcomings, because I have fallen short. But he says, I lift up my soul to you and he says that i trust you one author said this even though that he was confident even through that sorry he was confident that his trust in god was justified david knew that though he messed up god was still faithful when when he saw bathsheba and he made the mistake that he did with bathsheba and and he tried to get uriah to get with bathsheba right so he could cover up his mistake and he compounded the issue because uriah didn't want to Pot, com- comply with what he wanted right so he sent him in the front lines and said well we'll just kill him instead right that was what was in David's heart David messed up drastically right but then he's still praying to God he's still saying God I trust you through my mistakes church if we can be honest with ourselves we have made mistakes not God amen we serve a perfect God who even in the beginning did not make a mistake when he created us in his image he created us for fellowship with a relationship with him and we're the ones that mess that up. And I think over my 29 years of life and 20 years of being a Christian, I think I had more people said, well, Adam and Eve just screwed it up for the rest of us. Really? You think somebody else would have screwed it up? Cain and Abel, I mean, just go to the next story of the Bible, right? It doesn't take long that sin multiplies. And, and if, if Adam and Eve hadn't sinned, somebody would have eventually. Because I know how I am. Trevor would have screwed it up, okay? If it had got to Trevor, it would have got screwed up by him. But, but so often, David, how many times do we see the Psalms of David? David's crying out for help. He's not crying out because God's screwed up. He's screwed up, right? He's crying out to God that God would not forget him, that God would not leave him, that, that he would stick with him. But he, see, he says in verse 3, Indeed, let no one who waits on you be ashamed. Let those be ashamed who deal treacherously without cause. So he, what he's saying is let those who deal inappropriately be dealt with, right? He said, I made a mistake, but I'm trying to make amends and when we talk to these children this week and we talk about verses four and five and so many other verses in in the bible this week they have to know that they've made mistakes in life amen you can't get saved unless you understand the sin and the mistakes that you've made that's the admit part right i have to admit that i'm a sinner admit that i need jesus admit that i don't understand how to get to heaven except through jesus right and and he says show me your ways O lord teach me your paths one of Emily's favorite scriptures is Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6, right? Uh, and I can't quote them this morning, so Emily, you may have to quote them for me. I'll have to turn there. I can't remember. Help me out. Thank you. I don't know why I couldn't remember. <laughs> Thank you, Emily. <laughs> why I couldn't, couldn't make it come out, sorry. But it's a verse that Emily's loved and we've, we've talked about a lot, but this is the same idea. Show me your ways, God. This week as we prepare for VBS, I don't, I don't care about the my way, right? I want to do it God's way. 
That's what David is, is pleading for, God, to show him his ways and to teach me his paths, right? Church, we need to realize that this verse sometimes was in VBS, I don't know about anybody else, but it, it hits me that week that I'm at VBS and I go, wow, I needed that, right? I needed to know that God needs to show me some days. He still needs to teach me some days. Um, I, I don't know about anybody else, but decision making. I hate making decisions, right? If I didn't have God to help me make decisions, I wouldn't make very good decisions. I struggle to decide if I want a cheeseburger or a chicken sandwich and we go to eat, let alone big decisions, okay? Uh, buying a vehicle. I hate buying a vehicle. It's a hard decision. I don't know. That's, that's just so difficult, right? Maybe everybody else has better experience than I do. You must have better people you deal with. I don't know. But, but David's, David's realizing that he needs somebody to show him. And David makes a series of requests. He says, show me, teach me, lead me. And then he says, and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. On you I will wait all the day. So he says, show me, teach me, lead me, and teach me again. Anytime you see the Bible repeat something that close together, it's important, right? It, it is important to know that David wanted to be taught. Church, we should never quit learning. When you quit learning, you start dying, okay? It's just reality. It's like technology, right? If you don't like technology, I'm sorry, okay? I'm not a huge fan of it sometimes either. But this thing has made my life so much easier, right? My phone that's recording right now makes my life so much easier sometimes. And other times it gets me in trouble because it's technology and it irritates me and I want to throw it across the room, right? But so often the world has changed around us. It's changing all the time. We serve a God who has not changed ever, right? God's ways of getting a hold of people has changed as far as getting their attention, right? We look at, uh, get over there. <laughs> we look at the, the, the music that we do, right? And we do both. I, I'm, I never want to be somewhere we don't do hymns. I love hymns, okay? There's some that I don't know as well that Sheila makes sure to pick, so I don't know them. But there are some that I don't, nobody, nobody tell me amen on that, okay? But uh, there are some times that I'm like, I know this song. And they're like, nope, I didn't know that one. Lost. And the same thing could be said about contemporary music. But my point of saying this is there, you have to have both. Because there are people that respond to hymns, and there are people that respond to contemporary music. Some people don't respond to worship, and that's fine too. Uh, I know for myself, I play guitar every week, but I love worship. But even when we go to other churches, I love worshiping, right? Something about the music is, for, is, is something I enjoy, but I also enjoy the preaching. Sometimes you don't have both, you get one or the other, so... If you like the worship and you don't like my preaching, I need to leave a, like a drop box back there so we can have longer worship and less time for ever preaching. Um, I was joking with them this week as I was looking at Friday stuff and it, the book said an hour. I'm like, oh, good, I get to preach for an hour. And she looked at me and she goes, nah. I said, I'm going to start doing that every week then. So if, if I start preaching for an hour, I'm not going to say it's Sheila's fault, but she did kind of stir the pot a little bit, Sheila, didn't she? But the reality is that David is asking for these things knowing that he needs help. And, and one author said this, David trusts God and knows he is the, the one and only one who can deliver. He calls upon God to remember his faithful love, his covenant love, instead of remembering David's sin. So if you look in verse uh, 6, remember, O God, your tender mercies and your loving kindness, for they are from of old. Do, you, do not remember the sins of my youth, nor my transgressions. According to your mercy, remember me for your goodness sake, O Lord. So he calls upon God to remember that God has faithful love, that his covenant love, instead of remembering David's sins. Psalm 103 and 12 says this, As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. So when, when it says, when he says to not remember, do not remember the sins of my youth, God isn't the one bringing them up. Church, when, when kids get saved or adults get saved and Satan attacks the next day, Satan's not attacking anything, right, other than their faith in the, the decision they made. He can't, he can't argue that God died on a cross for him. He can't do anything with that, right? But what he can do is he can make you doubt. And he'll bring up your sins and go, did God really forget that one? Are you sure? If you've ever led somebody to Christ, I guarantee you the next day, if you, if you literally actually led them to Christ, Satan attacked you. And I could prove it pretty easily. But when we get doing what God wants us to do, Satan gets afraid. Right? Satan should be afraid of us, church. 
He should be fearful that when we get up in the morning that we're going to talk about Jesus. And we're going to point people to Jesus. And we're going to get people away from hell. Our, our goal as Christians should be to get as many saved. That should be our goal. Emily said it the other day, and I'm taking this challenge serious, okay? She said she wanted to lead more people to Christ than I do. So I'm already working on my kids so I could be the one to do it. Ha, huh, take that. By the way, when she said that, I think I said this. I didn't know that was a challenge, so now it's on, okay? The game is on at the Pasley house now. But, but the reality is, if that's what it takes for us to start sharing the gospel, that we need to be challenging each other every single day to share with somebody. We should be able to come to church and jump up and down and say, hey, I got somebody saved this week. Somebody found Jesus because I was able to talk to him. You didn't do anything but talk to him, right? But, but we should be rejoicing when somebody gets saved. I don't know how nobody jumped up and down when Callan told us a couple weeks ago. I mean, people were excited, don't get me wrong, but I didn't see anybody jumping up and down. And we're not Pentecostals. He didn't run up and down the, the aisle, but I'm just saying, uh, we, we, don't, we don't celebrate those things enough. I was talking to Dennis Seidel, um, pastor over at Grayville Friday night at, at uh, Wayne City. And if you know me and you know Dennis, we like to talk. So we were there a while. And he showed me a video of one young lady that got uh, saved at, at camp. And she went to tell her great-grandmother. And her great-grandmother, he had it wrong recording, jumping up and down, screaming, hollering, praising God because her granddaughter got saved. Church, that should be what we strive for each and every week. That when, when we say that, that for God to not remember the sins of my youth nor my transgression, he doesn't. He doesn't look at them anymore. Psalm 103 said it. He throws them as far as the east is from the west. Satan brings our sin back up. God doesn't. God doesn't look at you except through the blood of Jesus if you've accepted Christ. He, 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 you're not yourself anymore. Right? I've died to sin and I'm living for Christ. That should be our goal, church, each and every day if we're a, a Christian today. Tony Evans said this. Okay, and this is kind of long. He said, David appeals to God based on the loyal, loving relationship they shared. The greater the intimacy with God, the greater his dependency on God. And the greater his dependency on God, the greater the expectation for intervention and deliverance. David knew that past sins could interfere with God answering his requests. So he confesses the position to... Bleh. So he confesses himself of his sins to position himself in divine favor. Church, our past sins, if we haven't got right with Jesus about them, can be hindering God from answering us. I, I, if you got saved today and you ain't asked for forgiveness since, there's a problem in your life. <laughs> I've been saved since I was eight and I probably ask for forgiveness two or three times a day because I know I said something or I did something that I shouldn't have done. Church, we've all done and said and acted in a way that's not pleasing to God. Period. I, I, I don't care who you are, you've said it, you've done it. If you would be honest with yourself, right? You try to be good, don't get me wrong. But sometimes, that little guy on your shoulder just tells you, just say it, see what happens, right? Can't get that word back. Me and Emily are, are reading some books about how to speak in our marriage because sometimes we don't communicate well. Okay, I'll just be the first one to admit that. Um, sometimes we don't listen well either, and I haven't found the book for that one yet, so if you got one, let me know. Okay, the Bible works great, but we're missing something there. And it said to think about your words for a little longer because if you don't, you can't get it back out. It's like toothpaste out of the, the Colgate tube. You can't put it back in there, right? I don't care how hard you try to get toothpaste back in a tube. You can't do it. And if you can, you are a witch or something, okay? You're crazy if you can put toothpaste back in a tube. The same thing is true with our words. As we prepare this week to share with these young people, our words are going to matter, what we say is going to matter. How we act is going to matter. If I get up here and just yell at kids, it's not going to go very well, right? So if Trevor yells at anybody, please just throw something at him, okay? Everybody, I'll allow rotten food in here so you can throw it at me, okay? But he says, he says, do not remember the sins of my youth, verse 7, nor the transgressions. According to your mercy, remember me for your goodness sake, O Lord. He doesn't say for David's sake. He says for your goodness, God. We, we sing it, we're going to sing it tonight, Goodness of God. One of my favorite songs that's out there. Why? Because there is no greater goodness than God's to us. We, we, we don't get to have VBS every year if it's not because God is good. Be honest, right? If there wasn't a chance for somebody to get saved, we wouldn't have VBS every year. We, we wouldn't just have it to have a good time. I mean, I like having VBS, don't get me wrong. But there's a goal in it too, right? 
If nobody gets saved, it's okay. We planted the seed in those lives, or we watered the seed, right? We may not always get to reap the harvest, church, but we have to stay encouraged that we serve a God who acts upon his goodness. And he says in verse 8, uh, good and upright is the Lord, therefore he teaches sinners in the way. The humble he guides in justice, and the humble he teaches his way. All the paths, all the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth. We, we serve a God who punished in the Old Testament. He punishes still today. I, I've heard it. You've probably heard it as well. How could such a good God let people go to hell? Well, he laid it out pretty simple. He gave you all the answers, right? He, it's like if you were given a pop quiz, he gave you the answer. How do I get saved? Right here, right? You, you know, Walmart sells Bibles. They're not hard to find, right? We live in a country where we can find Bibles and find Bibles and find them. I, I was listening to, to a couple sermons this week, and I was actually listening to David Jeremiah and Tony Evans. I think I listened to almost one a day from each of them on um, the way to work. And one of them said they, they were uh, in this area and these people had a piece of the Bible, one p- page of it, right, that they'd taken out of the Bible. And you couldn't hardly read the words on it anymore because they passed it around the village because they couldn't have a Bible. They didn't have one. So that one page or two pages of the Bible, they'd wore so thin that you couldn't read the words anymore. Church, do our Bibles look like that? When the Bible's accessible, we don't look to it. When it's not, we look to it. In countries today where the gospel is spreading, I think I've said this before, the Bible's illegal, or they can't afford to get a Bible. I got four or five in my office that we went and bought for $10, and they can't afford a $10 Bible. I want you to think about that. Bibles are common in the United States today, yet we're the ones asking the most question about well, how can God send people to hell? Disobedience, right? Look in the Old Testament, the Tower of Babel. What were they trying to do? They were trying to be superior to God. And God said, nah, we're not going to let that happen. Why? Because we don't have the brain capacity to understand what God understands, church. I don't understand every in and out of the Bible. I'm never going to act like I do. But he says that the humble he guides and the humble he teaches and all the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth. And David Jeremiah said this, because God is good, upright, loving, and faithful, he teaches sinners and guides the humble, those who sense their need for divine help. Who did Jesus say he came for? Those who were sick, not those who were well, right? Those who knew that they were a sinner in need of a savior. Did he come for everybody? Yeah. Did the Pharisees have opportunity to accept Jesus? Yes, I believe they did. But Jesus didn't come for those people to believe. He came so that you and I would have access to God. Those of us that don't have kingly power, that don't have authority, Jesus died for everybody. And I'm going to talk about it Friday night again. But when we look at these verses, and, and he, he continues in verse 10, I, I didn't read the second half, and it says, to such as to keep his covenant and his testimonies. And he continues, and I could do this verse by verse. I'm not going to go forever, I promise. For your name's sake, O Lord, pardon my iniquity, for it is great. Who is the man that fears the Lord, him shall he teach in the way he chooses. So we could go verse by verse. We could look through the whole thing. It's pointing to the same thing over and over again. David's saying that I, I need you, God. Church, we need God in our church. We need God in our home lives. We need God not just at VBS time. Um, this verse was a verse I've obviously known, okay? Psalm 25, 4, but... We're going to talk about Psalm 25.4 every day this week because we serve a God who we should want to learn from, who we should want to understand the paths that he has for us. We're not going to be perfect this week, okay? So this is, this is your pastor trying to make it okay, okay? If something happens and a mistake, it's okay, okay? Things are going to happen. I make mistakes every week, okay? I make mistakes every Sunday we come and I try to play guitar and Sheila normally tells me I messed it up, Okay? Earlier she told me I was right, though. I'm just marked that one down. One for Trevor, okay? Carrie heard it, too. Right, Carrie? <laughs> I knew he'd do that to me. Man, stabbed me right in the back. I didn't hear nothing, Trevor. I don't know what you're talking about. I think he made some other comments, but I won't, I won't reshare those. I'll let Carrie share those later. But 
you know, we're, we're going to make mistakes, church. David made mistakes, and David is in the, the Hall of Fame, so to speak, of the Bible, right? Abraham made mistakes, and Abraham is talked about in Hebrews chapter 13 when it talks about the greats of the Bible, right? Noah made mistakes. Moses made everybody, everybody in the Bible made mistakes. And yet we still talk about them, right? Jesus is the only one that was innocent of any mistake. He served with sinners. He worked with each and every one that they would know him. And I, I believe that Jesus protected his disciples from sharing his name too much so that they would be able to when Jesus wasn't here. Church, we, we serve a God who has it all planned out. He knows exactly how our week's going to go this week. He knows exactly how much we've prayed for it this week. We, we pray for rain for our fields, but do we pray for the rain to come and salvation for those that we interact with? I'm, a, I'm not going to embarrass Callan too much, but I know there were several that had been pe- praying for Callan for some time to get saved. There's nothing wrong with that. We should be praying for each other, right? And, and, and when that person that we've been praying for gets saved, guess what? You better find another person to start praying for. What did the Bible say? Or what my stats say earlier, I should say? One, every person that's trained in VBS is a one-to-one ratio to get somebody saved. One-to-one. So if there's 20 of us here this week, guess what? And there's 20 kids, they should all have an opportunity to get saved. It's not that simple math. I'm not naive, okay? But the reality is that, church, you were all equipped to share the gospel with people. You may not feel like it, but you've all got this book right here. Right here. If you don't know the answer and you need help this week, let me know. The Roman road's right in this book. I don't, if you find an easier version, let me know. For God so loved the world, that's a pretty easy one too, right? Church, there are thousands of ways for us to share the gospel with people. But it all comes down to one person's name, the name of Jesus. If Jesus ain't in it, they ain't getting saved. If Jesus isn't talked about this week, there's no opportunity for somebody to accept him in their lives. That's why we gather this week. It's not just to hang out with each other. I'm, I want to hang out with you, don't get me wrong. But I don't come to VBS just to see you guys. You don't come to see me either. If you do, we need to have a talk, okay? But the reality is that this is just one verse we're going to talk about this week. Uh, there's a lot. Okay? I looked through the book this morning. There is a ton of verses that we're going to talk about this week. But we're going to talk about this one every day. God, show me what you have in my life. Show me what you have for those around me. Carrie, Sheila, if you'll come, I'm ask that everyone stay in this morning. We, we can decorate all we want. We can put all the, these great things on the wall. I'm thankful that, that Lifeway comes up with all this and we get to use it. Don't get me wrong. But without this, I don't care what decoration we put up. If the Bible ain't in it, it don't matter, right? I, I, this is just Trevor, okay? I'd rather decorate none and know that the Bible is the only thing I'm going to talk about than to decorate a bunch and never talk about the Bible. I know I don't have to worry about that, VBS. I know we're going to talk about both, but they're decorations. If something happened to the decorations, they're gone, right? Nobody can take salvation from us. Nobody can take salvation out of these young people's lives if Jesus offers it to them they, and they accept it. Nobody can take that away. Once they're in God's hands, he, they're there forever. Church, we're there forever, not just one week of the year. So I, I would encourage you to be in prayer, obviously continued, for these kids this week, for yourself this week if you're leading something. Uh, me and Emily have been praying for each and every one of you if you're helping this week, praying for the kids, but, but we all have to be praying that God would work this week and come believing that he's going to. I'm going to ask you to bow your heads with me this morning. Heavenly Father God, as we just come to you this morning, God, I thank you again for this day. God, I thank you for the safety of those through the storm. And, and God, I just ask that you would touch each one that's dealing with damage, God. And God, just dealing with the problems that come out of storms. God, I thank you that you're a God that helps us through some of the darkest storms in our own lives, God. God, that you've made a way for us to get away from hell and spend eternity with you in heaven, God. God, I thank you for those that are gathered this morning, God, in their heart for you. God, I just ask that this morning that each and every one of us would be obedient to you, God, whether it's salvation, baptism, church membership, God, whatever it might be this morning. Maybe it's just, God, we just need to pray. God, I ask that you would help us to be obedient to you. God, that we would be faithful in everything that's 
going to happen this week, God. God, that we would pray knowing that you're going to work. Knowing that you are still faithful today. And you still save souls for eternity, God. God, help us this week in VBS, God, to know that you are still in control. God, that, that no matter how this week goes, God, if somebody comes and they get saved this week, God, we'll, we'll rejoice in that. But, but God, if nobody comes and nobody gets saved this week, we're going to rejoice because we were able to talk to people about Jesus, God. God, help this VBS not just be a week-long thing, God. Help us to realize that the gospel needs to be shared every day with all ages of people, God. And God, this week, I just pray that if there is one that comes to our church this week, God, that comes into your house, that needs you, God, that they'd be responsive, that they would respond to you, God, they'd be receptive of your words to their hearts. God, I ask that this time of invitation, your will would just be done, God. And God, not let us, don't let us leave this place the same that we came. Forgive us where we fail. In the name of Jesus, I pray. And amen.